Hello, Hello, and welcome to the second instalment of Round the Archives in Conversation. And Martin and Paul are back. It's We've not like got anybody new away. yet. Hello. <laughs> Hello. No, we're nervous about inviting more people into the uh, into the group. Yet. <laughs> well, we, 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 we intend to expand it out, don't yes, we? But yeah. uh, I, th- I think the first one went down okay. Yeah. Um, it, I, I forget what the numbers are, but they they did pretty much the same as any other episode. So I don't think people care what we talk about, really. <laughs> as long as you didn't reason. put them all off li- listening to the next proper episode. That's the thing. <laughs> so, did you have something you wanted to pick up on today? Is there any burning issue? Ooh, well, let me think. So, um, well, the two things. I, I just got to walk over the room a minute. Give me a second. Did you hear that? Mm. That was a bell. What yeah, was that? I, f- I found a bell. Well, I needed to find a bell. <laughs> Why do you need a bell, Mark? That's that's my that's my Andy Priestner bell. <laughs> what the name drop bell? Indeed, yes. Indeed. <laughs> now, was... why would that? Why would that be, Martin? <laughs> because he's met everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fair enough. I mean, I I, I was saying uh, to Warren uh, in the chat yesterday. Um, uh, I kind of feel that I'm punching above my weight with this. I should just shut up and let him get on with it, really. <laughs> because I literally have never met anybody. But, um, <laughs> but uh, I mean, I've not even met you two. <laughs> well, nor is, nor is Andy. Well, Andy has met you, Andrew, hasn't he? <laughs> is that right? Yes. yes, Andy P has been on our sofa, yeah. if you'll pardon the expression. But he's not met me. Um, because, <laughs> yeah, because he, was, he came down to Bournemouth University to do a thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I got a message saying, I'm in Bournemouth University, can I come round? <laughs> <laughs> They've heard your chips so are good. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. But, well, you say that, Martin. Um, it's interesting, that, because you've never really done conventions, have you? Oh, God, no. No, no. Too much, too, no. Too, much too frightening. <laughs> <laughs> but... Why? Why is that? And don't, don't, Jay, don't just say too frightened. Well, uh, I, I don't know. It, really. I didn't. Come. On. Yeah, I was going to say, just did it just not interest you or enter your sort of sphere of influence? I don't really know. I suspect the the thing is that the, the era I would have um, probably done these things. Um, I was probably just not doing that. I was I was probably doing other things. You know, and I didn't really know anybody. I didn't have any. Uh, fan, you know, people who say, "Oh, we could go to this." You know, I didn't. I just didn't know anybody in the larger fandom world. And I wouldn't have gone on my own because I would have been, quite frankly, socially terrified <laughs> of that. You know, <laughs> uh, I know people say, "Oh, they're all very welcoming and everything like that," but but as as a as a a person on their own, I just I just I don't think I could have done it. The other thing was that the era when I was most involved in fandom of that kind, I was probably doing that shuffling, looking at my feet and being slightly embarrassed about the whole thing. But also, um, I think generally I was, um, I was just a bit, um, I don't know, I, I was just a bit I, I, nervous, you know? I think I would have been just very nervous of it. I mean, I still get a little bit nervous about going to book signings, you know, in case, in case for some reason someone catches my eye and asks me a direct question. You know, I think when they ask questions, they ask people to ask questions, there is no way in, in my life I was going to put my hand up for anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you, you mentioned that you sort of met Douglas Adams. Well, no, 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 no. I went or to, I went was to, in the same room, as. Yes, yeah, I went to a book signing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's more than I ever did. Well, yeah, it was the, uh, the um, last chance to see, ironically. Um, it was the only chance I ever got to see and uh, yes, no, I, I did go to a book signing. I, I used to go to book signings, and I suppose in that sense that was probably a bit more, um, a bit more like uh, my idea of a convention, if you like. If not in the sense that there was a person there, you went, and, you know, they talked, they signed your book. You know. So I suppose in terms of the, the uh, elements, that 
was probably the same kind of thing. But I just, I, 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 the other thing was, to be fair, the, the, the other key reason I suspect is I was, I was skint. <laughs> for a long time I was very skint I, I, I've always been an underpaid artist you know and uh, mm. uh, as opposed to now being a completely not paid artist oh. and, <laughs> but uh, and yeah I was uh, from the age of what 24 I had mortgage stuff like that and I just it wasn't an expense I could probably justify you know? but but Paul we mentioned it briefly last time mm. About the exospace conventions. Yeah. Were those the first ones um, uh, that you sort of went away? Yes. To yeah, because I've been to that one in Salisbury. I mean, I was lucky that because um, I'm about five years younger than than you and and Warren and Nick, and, um, so in in a way it was it's good to have, sort of have people to, to 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 be with who who are older than me and kind of. Knew, I didn't necessarily knew what you you were doing any better than I did, but <laughs> but at least the, you know. Um, and I think I think I was quite lucky I, that my parents kind of um, certainly with Nick they knew, they they knew Nick. And they kind of thought, well, he you know it's not like he's hanging out with a a twenty one year old who's leading him into uh, uh, <laughs> um, sort of dangerous territories or anything. So they they was they kind of were happy to let me kind of go off to London with Nick even when I was fifteen or sixteen sort of thing, which. Um, so so yeah, uh, when I went to Exospace, that was that was nineteen ninety. Was it the first one? Um, the first one, yeah, nineteen ninety. Yeah, yeah, so I was about was that October sort of time. Yeah, it's sort of Halloweeny, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah so I was about That's right. sixteen going on seventeen. I think it might have done their calculations wrong, but <laughs> but yeah. So but yeah, that was the first time I was probably the first time I'd gone away and stayed in a bed and breakfast and. Did, done anything like that was was for a Doctor Who convention. But but did you have any idea of what to expect at a convention? Um, when I went, by the time I went to Exospace, I had done the Salisbury one. When I went to the Salisbury one, um, I I don't know if I'd seen sort of footage because hadn't did I don't know if it was was it Nick or was it. So somebody went. Well, what's the leisure the leisure hive convention? There, there were some leisure hive ones, um, and then there was H- honeycomb in nineteen eighty nine. Yeah, I wonder if I'd seen that. Was also in Swindon. Yeah. yeah. And wh- wh- when was Shangri La? Was was that? Um, was that? That was eighty nine. Oh, as well. so in that case, yeah. I'd been to Shangri La before I'd been to Exxon Space. So yeah, I, I, yeah. Um, well, I mean, Shangri La was a very different sort of convention anyway. Um, that was in a tent. It was wasn't in a it? tent. Was it wasn't intended to be in a tent, but it ended up in a tent. Um, yeah, and that was in Reading, and that was uh, near where my great aunt lived. So uh, that was kind of a weird mixing of, of my parents going to see her and my great aunt wondering where I was going to. Sort of thing. Um, and, and Nick was with Nick came up with us, and um, my great aunt was still at the stage where, although I was sixteen or something, she still gave me sweeties when we met up, and she sort of had some sweeties for Nick as well, and, and which, which, was, which <laughs> Nick was very impressed about. <laughs> I've just but got you this w- you vision now of uh, is it is it what, what is it Lady Bracknell? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I can na- I can name someone you wouldn't take sweeties off, Paul. Uh, well, that was Anthony Ainley, wasn't it? Uh, yes, he offered me some uh, some sweeties, not just me, but probably yeah, people in was that when we were queuing for autographs and things. That's right. Yeah, Anthony Ainley went around handing handing out. Um, what was it? Um, it was some sweets, like isn't it? And, and you, you wouldn't take any. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, if the master offers you uh, sweets, you, you'd be silly to take them, really. Absolutely. <laughs> Might be trying to sell you them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Autograph them. <laughs> but would would you say that um, a convention can sort of be, be sort of made or broken by by the guests, really? Because um, cause I'm, th- I'm thinking about sort of when we did the Battlefield ones. Oh, yeah. I think it's true to say that Michael Sheard <laughs> on the dance floor is something you never forget, <laughs> is it? Yeah. yeah that, that was sort of the first time where, where I sort of met guests who weren't just in in there and then gone by the end of the... or at least gone into the green room or whatever. They, they sort of... Um, like Michael went be above and beyond what would you would expect from a, a, a guest. Uh, at... Uh, yeah, he he'd do. Uh, they play schools out by Alice Cooper, wouldn't they? and and he'd uh, get to sort of do his Mister Bunsen on us all. <laughs> ah, well, you see now, I have met the Sheedy, of course. I'd yeah. forgotten that. 
because he used to do uh, Fab Cafe in Manchester every so often, and I used to go back in the day. And uh, and uh, yeah, he would. He'd, he'd have them all bowing to him on the dance floor. <laughs> Yeah, we, we we got involved in writing a bit for his the book that he did about conventions as well, didn't we? Um, he wanted little sort of paragraphs to to start each chapter with a paragraph. Oh yes, from yes. a fan. That's right. Yeah, yeah. We 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 had a. I think that was his third book because I, I I lose track of his books. There was there was yes, Mister Bronson. That's the one. I yes, a, yeah, yes, Admiral. Then yes, schools out, mm. and there was a fourth one. I think yes, it's photographic, and we never <laughs> even got that one. Mm, no, I don't think I saw that one either. <laughs> yes, Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, I remember. I remember. Well, I've still got my copy somewhere, but I, I remember what my my paragraph was about. Um, going to conventions and, and sort of feeling sorry for the, the guests being asked, sort of. Uh, uh, like what's your favourite story what's your favourite to monster type questions mm. uh, and sort of cringing along with the stars and <laughs> thinking oh dear um, but, uh, well you see that's where I would that would I would, cr- I would crawl under a rock if anyone <laughs> <laughs> had, had approached me like that we, we had uh, back, back at uh, the book, book signing with Douglas Adams we had the moment where somebody asked him a specific thing about one of the hitchhiker books and he had not a clue what the kid was talking about and everybody was sort of looking at their feet and being terribly British, and then suddenly this he, this kid pipes up because he's found the reference from the book, and everyone else had forgotten about it, and it was all of it. And that's when Douglas Adams nearly fell off his chair. But, there we go. <laughs> but he was kind but, to him. You know. But yeah. Martin, did you ever make it to the Blackpool exhibition? Oh yeah, yeah, a couple of times. Yeah, uh, when yeah I was, because when I was very small. again, you mm-hmm. see, uh, we would have gone to Longleat. Mm-hmm. Because uh, it was, you know, just up the road. Well, not just up the road, but um, relatively, uh, uh, relatively <laughs> close. Uh, but Blackpool always seemed to be mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> it was like an exotic place. Yeah. It's probably not. But when did, when would you have first gone to the oh, Blackpool exhibition? I suppose I must have gone. I mean, we just went for day trips, you know. And I would probably have pestered my way into, "Can I do that, please, Dad?" You know. Um, Probably, I probably went twice in the mid seventies. I think I've got some photos I took on an Instamatic, which are not very good, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I do have sort of three or four photographs that are still uh, surviving. Uh, the Shri- Shrivenzal is in one, so that probably gets oh, right. it, uh, and uh, a couple of uh, the you know the glass panels around the console. I think they were they, they were much of a muchness like like exhibitions are. The only thing about the Golden Mile one, you know, it was kind of underground. You had to go down these steps to get into it, and and you were greeted by the the ubiquitous Dalek and uh, the and of course I still because I'm I think I think actually come to think of it I think that's where I bought my Dennis Fisher giant robot, pretty sure, <laughs> but which I still have somewhere, and <laughs> it's like I have every day. I keep telling you, this. nothing ever gets thrown away, which is driving everybody to distraction. It's just more compact today because I've been doing some. And making the most of my time at home, <laughs> but, uh, but and, I, and also the um, you know the poster magazines. So, yes, so I have those. So, yeah. so the poster magazines, which I still have somewhere, are um, were I think the reason I have two copies is because I went to Blackpool twice and the one got cut up for my uh, <laughs> my scrapbooks because I was an absolute. Yeah, I would I would I was so uh, shameless in, in hacking things up for the scrapbooks, which would break some some collectors hearts now <laughs> you know, the stuff in those scrapbooks <laughs> but then there's still there's still the other copy you see, which went on my wall in my bedroom so um yeah it, uh, but I, I, the poster magazines are the thing i most remember buying and i, I still have my uh what was it tardis commander badge and my uh, there's, there's still an exhibition pencil somewhere in a box you know i think i did a, a video once upon a time where i sort of dug some stuff out of a box and there it was you know but Paul, we used to go in the nineties to Longleat when they they had those sort of one day things that sort mm. of John Nathan Turner organised, and I do remember they had an auction where I remember bidding on Nicholas Courtney's hairpiece, <laughs> as you do, do, do <laughs> as you do. Um, it was it was the the one he had in I think it was Mordred Undead. Yes, <laughs> when when you had the younger Brigadier, yeah, uh, and it, it came in a box. 
probably with a certificate, and I wanted to buy it for you to use as a monster in Sutton Park. <laughs> but once it went went beyond about thirty quid, I thought, sod this, I'm not paying that much. <laughs> ah, the brig, the brig troops are coming. That's fair enough. We could still, have, we could have just bought one for me. Yeah. We could have stood, we should have stood on it, and just bought one from a trick shop or something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and just pretended. Oh, <laughs> did 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 you um? Did you go to the Longleat event in 1983? No, I remember listening to it on the radio, listening to Ed Stewpot, who was <laughs> broadcasting from there. Um, no, we couldn't get there because my dad was working. So I, I remember being a bit... I, I felt I was missing out. Um, uh, I went. I went. But, 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 but what I was going to say, you, you, you made it, didn't you? I made it, but I was only nine or something. Um, yeah. And... Um, so we didn't go, uh, so I don't think we got the benefit of it really, um, because I didn't watch any videos, I didn't go to any panels. Um, I, you know, I, I was kind of, you know, sort of had to stay with my parents really. I remember going around an exhibition and I remember seeing Mark Strickson getting out of either a taxi or a car as he arrived at the event. Um, but and I've got a few pictures of me with Cybermen and and the Triffid. I don't know what the. Tri- I don't know if the Triffid was visit was visiting. Maybe the, the Triffid was a Doctor <laughs> Who fan. I don't know why the Triffid was there. Uh, but uh, the um, was was there, was there a, a? Are you in the wide shots on the on the stuff on the DVD? I might. I might, I might Can be, you be spotted, I might little be, Yeti? Yeah, and my brother would have been even littler. Um, <laughs> my brother was only well. I don't know where my brother would have been because he would have mm. barely been one years old in 1983. So. Mm. Um, now, some people I knew went. Uh, the two two brothers I knew. Uh, well, one of them. I don't know whether they both went, but they were the tallest people I knew. One was six foot four, and one was six foot three. Mm-hmm. And and the only reason I remember them, I think uh, I think the younger brother went, or maybe maybe they all went as a family. I can't remember because it can't have been that old. But it, he just told me how incredibly tall Peter Davison was. Mm-hmm. And considering these these lads. When I knew him, was six foot four and six foot three. <laughs> I kind of thought, "Crikey, how tall is Peter Davis?" <laughs> t- t- talking about being preserved on DVD extras, there's mm-hmm. now I can't remember which one it is. It's either the the Wolf Time Convention, which it, which it was when the extended Curse of Fenric came out, or it was the Tomb of the Cybermen DVD release, uh, well, a video release, I suppose. Um, there's rumours that that. Because I know I had a cold on either one of those two, and I, and you can hear somebody coughing, and 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 I know people have said, I, I think that was you. I bet that's you. That, your cough's been preserved on DVD. <laughs> the cough that went round the world. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not to blame for the current one. But, uh, <laughs> well, we'll we'll, Martin, we'll let you off. Yeah. <laughs> but Martin, you said about the Golden Mile. Oh yes, and that that's just made me think because of, of course that pops up in. Is it the second episode of Adam Adam Ant Lives? Um, um, they're they're going to blow up the Golden Mile or something like that. So I I, I just like to ask you, sort of, um, move, moving a bit wider than Doctor Who. Oh yes. Um, filming locations. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you visited Arthur Lowe's house. <laughs> um, yes. But when you get when you go to places, if you know that somewhere's filmed there, do you ever take photos or? or, or or, or, or to stand in a position. The reason I ask is because I think the last but one time we went to Oxford, mm. we'd recently watched an episode of Callan, which was set in Oxford. Yeah. And and I'd got a screenshot of where they'd filmed, and I wanted to take almost exactly the same sort of photograph from the same position. Um, and I managed it, and you can see how much the tree had grown in the intervening years. It was the same tree, <laughs> and I, I managed to line it up. So I, I, ju- I just wonder if, you, if you've sort of ever been to I filming suspect, locations for things. I suspect you're a bit more forensic than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because I, because you know, I, I, I know you have the was it the travels without the. Tardis, Tardis. Yeah. so I mean I know there are. I love that book. People yeah. knock that book, but I yeah. loved it at the time. Yeah. I thought it was brilliant. Yeah, but there are people who, you know, I mean, obviously, uh, y- you do see in uh, certainly in a lot of fan magazines, you know, pictures of then and now, and quite a lot. There's a there's a very good website about Danger Man, which has you know current photographs and and, and the locations. Oddly enough, uh, when we've been to Anglesey. 
uh, we go to Penmon Lighthouse quite regularly, and Penmon features in one of the Danger Man episodes. But of course, I've been going to Penmon for years before I. Uh, it's only about two years ago I watched all the black and white Danger Man, and I suddenly thought, oh, I know that. <laughs> So uh, obviously we've been to Port Mirian a couple yes. of times. I've been, yeah, I was just—I was, was just going to say I've never been to the Ooh, village. I have, and, and I feel that I've missed. Out. Well, there we go. When so. we do the RTA convention, that's where we'll. <laughs> but, but, um, but the other thing is that uh, one of the reasons I uh, went when I first went to um, America, or well, I, I travelled all on my own for three weeks, uh, which was terribly, terribly brave of me. Yeah. I'd never gone anywhere. I, I, I woke up one Sunday, looked at the. I had a world map on my wall, and I looked at the, the radius of the places I'd been, and realised I'd not been anywhere. So I picked Seattle, mm -hmm. <laughs> and on Monday I, fl I, I booked tickets and flew to Seattle. Drove down the west coast, but one of the reasons I went to Yosemite Park was because of Star Trek Five, <laughs> <laughs> and that was the pretty much the only reason I'd ever heard of Yosemite Park. But I went to Yosemite Park because I'd seen Captain Kirk climbing El Capitan, although obviously it was a bit of a fake El Capitan that he was actually climbing, and also the Golden Gate Bridge, uh, which also features in the film. So I'd, I had, I had a, you know, certainly San Francisco is a place I've been. We also are quite Hitchcock fans, so we, we, there is a very good book we bought about uh, locations, uh, San Francisco locations, called, I think it's called Footsteps in the Fog, uh, which which were used by um, Hitchcock when he was filming Vertigo. So maybe film locations more than, than TV ones, to be honest. Uh, the problem is really up here. I mean, OK, there's Homeforth. <laughs> Strangely enough, I've never been to Homeforth. But Homeforth is, you know... I think I have. I think yeah. um, because I think my parents belong to Holiday Property Bond, and I think Holiday Property Bond have a place in Homeforth, or certainly very close, and we stayed there, mm. but could be at least 20 years ago now, but yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, a bit of Survivors was filmed up in Derbyshire, uh, but also the Lake District, um, which is um, uh, the, again Keswick uh, is, is where the uh, I think there's a, a, a Poirot is filmed at Derwent Water, Derwent Water Hotel. So that's kind of familiar from that. Whenever it comes on, oh, it's been there, been there, you know. But uh, I've not, I've never consciously done it, but I seem to have been to quite a few places that have been. You know, it was it was kind of weird when we we saw Skyfall. You know, that scene in uh, Glencoe in mm -hmm. Skyfall, uh, just because I'd driven through it about two years earlier. You know? <laughs> I thought oh, that looks familiar. Oh, that's that's that bit of Scotland. <laughs> you know? uh, I was in Jersey. Um, well, I've been to Jersey a lot of times, but about two or three years ago, and we were sitting in a pub. And we realised it was the pub that the character Lil ha had as a pub in Bergerac. Um, being a Bergerac fan, that, that was very exciting. <laughs> um, but uh, she, she, in the series, she upgraded it later on to a nightclub. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, we didn't, we didn't uh, get to visit that. But we were sitting in her pub, or what had been used as her pub back in the year uh, mm -hmm. 80s. The other, the other thing that interests me about this, though, is, I don't, and I don't know whether you found the same, but it's, you know, the, the geography of film and the geography mm. of reality are, you know, way, way places are cut together in, in things like Bullet or things like, say, San Francisco, you know, things like uh, 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 Dirty Harry or whatever. You know, and the places you know that they're ten, fifteen miles apart. You know, the, the Star Trek film. You know, the, the the bits they're walking to and from are just in the wrong part of the geography. You know, the, all that stuff about the naval shipyards and when they're walking along the front, when the bridge in the background, but they've actually got on a bridge that goes over the bridge, and sorry, a bus that goes over the bridge, and things like this. And you get strange, um, strange architecture. My, my favourite is is the James Bond film Spy Who Loved Me because of Egypt. Because having having been on a boat down the Nile ten years ago now, uh, there are two scenes that are cut together, which are a four hundred mile walk. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, uh, uh, Nick and I learned this um, back in our filmmaking days when we were doing Sutton Park. At the start, I used to <laughs> I would always say I was where I was, and then as we went on, I realised that we did well. Andrew was involved, and Lisa were involved in in our film Sutton Park Prison in the Sun, which we filmed it around Salisbury. But because we said it was Sutton Park, people who watched it talked about it as if they thought we were filming in Birmingham. We suddenly realised that if you say it's somewhere, unless somebody knows otherwise, they presume yeah. you're not 
you're, you're, you're telling the truth. So after that, I used to do things in Sutton, normal Sutton Park, where I'd say, oh, I was in America, I was here, I was there, and I'd just lie about it all the time and just put a prop <laughs> that illustrated it. I realised you could be, you could, you could do, you know, I'm sure they do that a lot on Covenant Doctor was Who it, even. So. Wasn't it the Dorset Sun Pit that was for Beaugest? And, yeah. uh, yes. <laughs> and yeah. um, what's the other one? The, uh, the Oh, Tanak Bray. Yeah. Somewhere in Essex or somewhere. I'm sure there's a lot of Wales that isn't claiming to be Wales on current Doctor Who as well. <laughs> or vice well, versa. Even I, even I fell for some of Nick's tricks because there was one that you partially, uh, Nick partially filmed in London, mm. um, but some other scenes were done in Salisbury. But um, I didn't even notice. I assumed it was all London. That's the thing. So, oh, yeah. well, we were doing that. Was the one with where there was the, supposed to be the wasteland area, wasn't there? And we yeah, we, we yeah. pieced that together from lots of different locations in Salisbury and London and outskirts of London and all sorts. Because uh, yeah. that's the one that, um, filmed outside the Metropolitan Police mm. HQ, isn't it? Where Lisa was minding all the bags and feeling self-conscious <laughs> yes. when p- policemen would go past and look at her wondering what she was doing but, yeah. uh, I, I, talking about locations I also helped a friend um, who was doing a sort of documentary about the locations I can't remember if it was just the locations of Doctor in London this was back in the 90s and um, I don't know if he was taking it from that Travels in the TARDIS book but I did help so I went to quite a few locations that I didn't necessarily know because I was helping him. Um, unfortunately, some of the locations that might be mentioned, actually, yeah, they're not that happy if you turn up in front of MOD buildings and start filming. And <laughs> So they might have been in that book, but perhaps uh, it should, they should have been mentioned. <laughs> the, don't, don't start filming, or don't try and get into <laughs> so-and-so part of Heathrow Airport. Or <laughs> I bet you've had the same thought as me, though. I bet you have, that, that, that at the moment, all those empty streets... <laughs> Mm. would be an absolute gift to the filmmaker if we were allowed out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I try to do a little bit of, um, of, of, the, of the podcast just because I don't even have a garden or anything I can go into, but I have a, a yard. I sort of stepped out into the yard for about a minute and saw a few people sort of milling around the station and got scared and came back in again. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's the limits of my going out yeah. at the moment. Curious times, curious yeah. times. Yeah. But Paul, I was also going to say that um, one of your locations that you've returned to more than once, I think, is Avebury, isn't it? Oh, yes. And yes. and Avebury, again, I didn't really watch Children of the Stones when it was first on. So there was no association for me when I first went to Avebury. Yeah. Um, it was only later when I saw it on, on VHS, I think. Yeah, I think... But, I, I, I think I must have gone there because, because my friend Paul, uh, other Paul, um, and I used to jump on the bus from Salisbury and go to Marlborough and, and Avebury. There used to be a direct service. Um, and maybe even been with my parents, but it, it wasn't until sometime whenever Nick got his first copy of Children of the Stones that I, I saw that, but I'd definitely been there before. So I'm probably a bit like you. I, I knew of it or had been there when I was a sort of, you know, before I sort of got to see that and I wasn't I was a little bit too young for it the first time round so so yeah uh, what 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 about caves Martin have you have you have you been down a Doctor Who cave Ooh, of any description um I'm not sure I don't think so I've been I've been down some caves man I've been in some caves love yeah like Ch- Chislehurst or, or no, something no. like that I'd, no? I'd, 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 I've been uh, I mean they, they had the Blue John mines up here uh, but I don't know whether they've been used for any locations. And I, I, I've been to a cave in Yugoslavia when I was very, very young. But uh, I don't really remember any. I mean, I've been to Cheddar Gorge, so it's possible there's there's caves near Cheddar Gorge that that I, I possibly, you know, done that sort of day trip thing. But I don't actually remember it at all. Because when you go to Wookiee Hole, uh, Wookie. um, you, you you get the tour guide mm. and, and you get the full Mark Gatiss you know um, oh yeah this is where tom baker was but uh, even as a kid i remember being annoyed when they'd say this is where the tardis landed in revenge of the cybermen <laughs> but sir I but sir thinking, i remember thinking no no <laughs> that was what, all in studio it was a, and it was, it was a teleport <laughs> yes 
I, 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 God, I bet they loved you. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been I've been to Cheddar Caves and Wookiee Hell, but I mean, probably back in the nineties when I was doing Southern Park, I definitely went mm. to one of those. But but more recently, I've been to Chiswellhurst. Um, but I, I think when I sort of went there, I wasn't really even I didn't know what had been filmed there. I, it was one of those things where somebody's going and they say, "Do you want to go?" And I was like, "All oh, caves, exciting, yes." Um, but I had to find out later what, what had been recorded there. But it, it, it's strange, you see, that you um, specifically, because you're all in, in the sort of, to, to, to a broader or lesser extent, in the home counties, you know, the south, mm. and you know that's where a lot of television was made. And uh, up here, I mean, uh, Granada, you know, I, I, whenever I watch, I mean, I was, I was saying in the article I did last year, you know, about strangers, it's a lost Manchester to me, you know, and uh, the, a lot of the Granada stuff. And the crime uh, series that were filmed around Manchester. That all seems terribly familiar to me in a way that probably doesn't mean anything to anybody else. I mean, I, I, do you remember um, the, the, all the palaver, hoo-ha uh, feature that was made of London being used in the James Bond film? The um, Is it World Is Not Enough with the London Eye and the Dome and everything? Oh, yeah. yeah. And, they're, and they're making a big deal of it being London. And I imagine that... I, I, I mean, internationally, I'm sure that was really interesting, but a lot of people just thought, oh, it's just London, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, what well, is that? I can see that out my window, you know. Because is, is it very much for selling it abroad? That, you know, that there's, a, there's, a, there's an image of London that you have to, have to sort of sell to the, oh, the sort of yeah. American market or something, I don't know. It just just was interesting to me that that actually seemed quite dull to to, to a British viewer in a way that it was probably incredibly exciting to Americans or you know Brazilians or you know Welshmen. I don't know. <laughs> the, the, there's one location which I like to think we kind of got there first in a way. Um, oh. That I, I think I was I was discussing this the other day um, that when we. Well, when we did Sutton Park, and then when we did one of our our Blake Seven, uh, the the return, uh, we recorded a lot of that around Highgate and around on a an old railway line between sort of Highgate and um, well somewhere else at the other end, uh, and um, I, I recorded there quite a lot. Then we recorded it for for the, for Blake the return. And then a few years later, EastEnders were using it because it's like, it's like a, a, there's a couple of spooky tunnels that now go nowhere, but um, you weren't really supposed to be able to go into them. But you, if you turned up, sometimes you'd find they were open and you could go into them. And on Sutton Park, we it was great. We took torches and did sort of X-Files spoofs because it was that sort of time. Um, and I, I can't remember what we used it for it, when we did the return um but but it was a, a ready-made exciting location and and eastenders used it a few years after us so i was, mm. I was like yeah you know, eh, you know the, only, the only tunnel i remember is is the the one at greenwich is it the one that goes across yes. from the maritime you know which yes. I, was that used in Sunmakers or that was the one they also used that in web of fear as part of <sighs> pretending it was the underground um oh, and, yeah. and 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 we used it in Sutton Park as well, of course, uh, and I think I did that that documentary of Doctor Who locations. I I went there um, and and visited that. So, yeah, yeah. There's a few weird sort of stories about time slips and stuff that that um, uh, about the the Greenwich Foot Tunnel. Where, but that's too too long to go into at the moment. But there, there's stuff where people have kind of said that time has kind of gone faster for them or slower them than when I mean, they've gone down there, but. I can understand that. It does feel when you get to the other side that you're in a, you know, you have crossed something, doesn't it? Yeah, it's one of those things where I think workmen who've spent lots of time down there, there's been some odd sort of not exactly ghostly stories about mm. the foot tunnel, but yeah, time sort of um, jumping type uh, mm. stories. <laughs> worth wow. it, worth investigating. But Paul, you, you mentioned about sort of filming, filming in London. Do you think? back now on some of the things you did and think we'd never be allowed to do that now um yeah i'm sure that i i i, I mean s some of them might be examples where things have grown up we did used to film a lot around the barbican around the foot the, the sort of corridors and um 
uh, and sort of it's a, it's a weird area the Barbican because you've got all the modern buildings and but then you've got lots of corridors between them and 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 it's not like you're trespassing because they are public footways to get to the Barbican theatre um, and, and in fact that's how I dis- how I discovered it no it's how I personally discovered it was going to see a Shakespeare play when I was in sixth form and th- and being far more interested in the location than the than the Shakespeare play and then and sort of thinking oh one day I want to come back here and it wasn't that much longer afterwards that I started doing my own stuff so we we quite often went to um, Barbican to use it as a sort of futuristic location but I think over the last few years some of the areas that we recorded in have been sort of reclaimed for restaurants and so there's there's less little places for uh, I'm sure I'm sure sure I don't think you were part of it Andrew but you've probably seen the stuff some stuff we did there where we were using chairs like we were in some sort of spaceship we was filmed it close and everything like that some seating yeah um but um, i don't think i think that area has all been sort of turned into restaurants now so so partly there's those sort of um areas and also sometimes not necessarily with london but uh, i had a friend who went to Magdalen college in oxford and i got to film up the tower which only students Sort of. I mean, it's not that easy to get up the tower. Um, at, at, you know, certainly not as a member of the public. So I only got to do a fight sequence up there with, with that friend because he was able to get the key and we were able to go up there, and I was able to film in the gardens and stuff because he had access to it. And I mean, I even did filming in some of the, uh, sort of, um, sort so of libraries and stuff. Uh, I think we did an episode where one of us got squinched between a, a stack system. You know, all these sort of areas you were able to get into because you had people who were students or were, were, were working in places um, just taking make, making t- sort of putting the series around the locations or what opportunities you had um, which because you know. how, how much sort of clearance did you ever attempt to get <laughs> almost none what for, su- for certain part perhaps for, well, 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 for, well, for, for no, next stuff well for the more formal things the more st- yeah. formal stuff I think um, I believe that Nick when we did Southern Park Prison in the Sun uh, Nick wrote to the place we uh, uh, were going to film in, and and the the only thing they were concerned about was that it was a a, a blue movie, <laughs> <laughs> um, and Nick, Nick Nick had to explain that no, and and they were almost like, well, why are you bothering us about it then? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we'd have been interested. Of <laughs> yeah, we don't want to know about that. Um, so Nick had to say no. Nobody would be taking their clothes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then um, you all did. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the B, that's the X-rated version. But, um, but I, I'm I'm not sure because mostly the projects were were Nick's baby, and I was just acting, or, or I might have script edited them. I don't know how many of them he contacted people. I know he he did do that um, uh, oh. on a few occasions. But obviously, the stuff I was doing that w- wasn't really the the case because it was very spur of the moment. But. Uh, um, yeah. The thing that interests me, of course, is, is, is uh, quite a lot of your locations were quarries and sandpits, weren't they? And mm. Obviously, they weren't the kind of places you could just go and visit uh, <laughs> in terms of uh, actually. But what, didn't isn't there a bit in Whiffle Lever about they having some sort of gunfight in a, in a sandpit somewhere? Oh, yes, yes. That uh, they it, did every it, year it, or something. What? What was it? Bob Bob Fisher came down with some sort of <laughs> came down with a hitchhiker. Uh, it sounds like it's, it's the disease. Uh, <laughs> Bob Fisher do. came down with the sort of hitchhikers fans, and they had a big water pistol fight or something like that. Yeah. So I, I never. That's the thing. I mean, I've been involved in Doctor Who fandom sort of on the edges, I guess. Mm. But other fandoms are all a bit of a mystery to me. Yeah. That I'm not aware of. Hitchhikers fandom or Blake Seven or even the Prisoner. You're saying mm. about you know the village. Mm. I mean, you know we 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 tend to sort of focus on Doctor Who, but let's not forget about all the other sort of groups that are out there. So because Paul, you went to a convention that was partially Doctor Who, mm. partially Blake Seven, sure, wasn't yeah. it? Who, do, yeah, do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, Who Seven? Who Seven? We went to two of yeah. those. Um, Lisa came to. In fact. Um, there were more of us at the first one, which was in Crystal Palace, which, funnily enough, was where one of um, the main people I did um, Sutton Park with lived. So we were going to the convention, but we were also rushing off and doing bits of Sutton Park. But then um, on Who Seven Two, it was I think it was really just Lisa and I, and that was much that was um, 
in a completely different location outside of London, and um, yeah, that 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 was sort of uh, yeah a bit different because you did. I mean, a lot of obviously fans of who, of who and Blake Seven crossover, but there are, there are people probably who 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 are just Blake Seven fans. Um, I mean, I'm aware of other fan you know fan groups where I've kind of dipped my toes in things like Dark Shadows or even Prison Cell Block H things like that but I've never been to events for them um, but yeah I mean but do, do they all get on? <laughs> well the Blade 7 <laughs> Doctor Who ones probably do close enough um, mm. because they are connected but uh, yeah no I don't, I don't really you know, you know when it's we're completely different types of series is, no, no I don't think they even come across each other much it's just we were having a a conversation online a few days ago about whether Star Trek fans are, you know, yes. m- mono in- interested. They don't have broad spectrum interest in sci fi or television generally. Yeah, I don't know if it's be- because maybe uh, American fans of Star Trek don't haven't had the opportunity to watch, you know, they, they, years ago they may have heard of Doctor mm. Who, but they won't have heard of, they, they might not have heard of Sapphire Steel or mm. they might, in the way that. We had a lot of us hadn't heard of Dark Shadows until the the nineties. Um, uh, but you were saying that Toppy, or are they, when you were having that conversation with mm. Toppy, it, it was it was about he was interested in all sorts of fantasy television. Yeah, yeah. But but but, but a lot of fans are very focused on the thing they like. Yes, and yeah. to the exclusion of all all others. You know. Yeah, well, I just, yeah. I wonder, or the, or very much the same type of of mm. sci-fi um, if they mm. like. Star Trek, maybe they like Babylon Five, or maybe they like. Um, mm. um, whereas, I, I I don't think of myself as a sci fi or just a sci-fi fan. Some of the shows mm. I like are sci-fi, but some mm. of them are horror. Some of them are nothing to do with fantasy or, or mm. supernatural or you know, like Bergerac. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, fair enough. But so, so, really, you know, that's why a I terrifying know. Bergerac and all its. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but I mean, because you look at something like uh, Lost in Space, yeah. you know, which was about. It was a couple, maybe a couple of years before Star Trek was on TV, and it and it's sort of the same kind of thing, but they're they're completely different animals, aren't they? Really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know. I know, Martin. When when you've done sort of some articles for us, you've attempted to sort of wave the flag a bit on other Facebook groups, haven't you? For like Fanderson and things like, things mm-hmm. like that. I, I just wonder. Um, uh, and we've we've actually managed to get a posting for the new issue on a Keeping Up Appearances um, right. Facebook group. <laughs> so it's just interesting what groups there are out there if you start digging. And and I, I just wonder how much people are interested in in everything, and how how many people are just interested in one thing. Well, so it's difficult, it's just, isn't it? I mean, that's always the thing. I mean, with, with podcasting generally, you know, you you can only do the thing you do. I mean, I've been surprised, for example, that the the Biderbeck article that we did hasn't been anything like as uh, listened to as the uh, All Creatures one, because I, th- I actually think it's a better article, personally, and I yeah. also think it's a better programme in many ways, in terms of the things you've got to talk about and the interesting things you've got to say, but, you know, people just don't necessarily, it, it's not their thing, they're not going to seek it out. Uh, where if you can't just you know if you just say archive TV or British drama, you know maybe there are people who are have a, have a broader thing, but people do tend to be very focused on the thing they like. You know, mm. I mean that's what, when we come to plan an issue, we sometimes sort of think, well, we need a thing that's popular <laughs> as well as the more obscure stuff, just 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 to because I think that's what people latch on to. So I, I think. You know, this time round, keeping up appearances is very much our lead article, hmm. um, and then you hope that people will hang on for the rest of it. So <laughs> that bloke so droning on about Quakermas again. I've, I've, <laughs> I've, I've rather, I've rather sort of take you down a blind alley with those, haven't I? You, you kind of like you've got to put them in because this, you, once you've got this far, you can't not. But it does tend to sit there like this, this wodge of oh that again. You know? I, I think, I think what I'm doing shows um that i'm not like a super fan of um i'm so that, that's probably why i try and twist it towards being my experience so uh, yes because i don't because you know I, i'm aware that there's probably a, a prisoner of Cyborg h fan or there's a Berger fan or there's somebody who knows but far better than i do so i just try and 
talk about it from <coughs> the first episode I saw, or this is a very personal episode to me because because then they can't say you're wrong. You're wrong. Um, but I'm not trying to do a complete history of. Uh, I'm just trying to do a sort of a little okay. bit of a, his, a little bit of information if you don't know anything about okay. it. And then my experience was this. Um, or maybe mm. we're we're watching this episode today, and, and what's our immediate thoughts on this episode? Mm. So but I, I look at them as as, as as samplers. You're telling somebody yes. this is a thing I enjoyed. Yes, yeah. You might enjoy it too, and yeah. this is why I enjoyed it, and that yeah. works. Yeah, that's yeah, that's best for me. <laughs> no, it, and it and it works. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, there there are you know, I mean, I, I you know, hold my hand up and say there are programs that we talk about on on round the archives specifically that I probably never never I'd cross the street not to watch. You know, but but um, that's you know that's the thing you, you, that if you can get the enthusiasm you'll go okay maybe i'll give it a shot you know and that's and that's really what happens you know we, we, talking yeah, I mean, of I which oh God. <laughs> hey, I, I was just going to say I, th I think it's quite a good example this month there are probably not many podcasts that in the same issue would do quite <laughs> mess in the pit episode four and the cannon and ball show so <laughs> You know, if if you're Although. a fan of a thing, I want you on around the archives. That's the thing. Well, yeah. We're always looking for the connections. You see, that's the thing. You see, cannonball, missile, buried. Oh, I think it all it all joins together. You know, I, 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 I won't mention the series, but um, it shows how long we've been going now. In in that. Um, one of the early episodes, the series was covered, which I, I, I would have heard the article, and then two or three years down the line, for something, some other reason, I bought that series and was and watched it and thought, oh, this is really good. And I think I even mm. said to you, Andrew, um, oh, what if I do this for? And you, and you were like, well, yeah, we did that back in episode five. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> and, I, and I went back and I was like, oh yeah, yeah, you uh, <laughs> the commissioning editor's nightmare. You know, well, what about what about statues that come to life? Sorry, no, we've done that. We did that in series three. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but anyway, yeah. go on. No, you were about no, to say no, so. All I was going to say was that um, when we come to sort of plan these issues, it does feel like planning a season of Doctor Who, <laughs> in, in that you need some variety in each each issue. You don't want each article to be the same thing. So that's that's why I'm always keen to to try new things. So yeah. But anyway, what are we watching? What are moment, we watching? What are you watching? You've obviously been watching uh, Keeping Up Appearances, but have you been watching anything else recently? Yes. Well, um, we've just cracked open our Softly Softly Task Force set. Oh, the German which one. Is the German set, <coughs> yes. Um, and I think maybe we can talk about this in, in full sort of ne next time, about availability of stuff. Mm. Where Sometimes you have to go through hoops to mm. find certain releases of things they seem to be but, releasing them in groups of eight rather than in series order and things don't they that's that's yeah, yeah. Mm. but but yeah we, we'd sort of dipped in and out of softly softly task force mm. and a few had appeared uh, on youtube mm. and when they when they appear we sort of look at them um but i have to say the first two episodes on this disc set both by elwin jones i don't know you know, if that's a mark quality in softly, softly, <laughs> I think it is. Um, really blew us away just how damn good they were, mm. and I, I, it, it's really gone up the league of things we ought to cover at oh, yeah. some stage now. Well, I've already got one penciled in for you. But away. Yes. But Sorry, I've already got one episode pen penciled in for you for that anyway. Oh, but, um, oh, good. Oh, yeah. But um, but no, I just think it's it's one of those programs that you always. There's a lot of people that talk about. Um, you know those those seventies police series as being a bit hokey and a bit you know and when, I mean some of the script they they really do stick with you you know they, once you watch them it's like being hit by a hammer it's just astonishingly strong stuff really you know considering it's it is studio and film and you know it's the BBC and you know dear old said cars wasn't that cosy you know and and yeah it's it's just, it's the, the storylines are incredible they are but we'll go on to that. <laughs> <laughs> But Paul, what about you? What, what, what's in your um, watching list at the moment? I'm still working through uh, this life from the '90s, uh, as I sort of remember it when, when it was first screened, and I was a similar age to the characters. So um, it's one of those ones I, I thought I've, I've had the set, and I thought I'd, you know, I'd start watching it. But 
and maybe I've watched a few and then I get distracted. But actually, I'm halfway through the second series with only about three discs left and the fine, and the sort of ten year anniversary movie. So it looks like I'm going to get through the whole the whole thirty three or whatever episodes. Isolation um, recommendation is that all night player at the moment? I I'm I've got the release, so I'm not sure. Right. I'm okay. not sure where it's available um, outside of physical releases, but I'm sure it would, would be on. On, on I just thought I, I did. I'm sure it was one of the things I thought they were going to put on yeah, you know, in the yeah. on iPlayer as extra things because of everyone yeah, being trapped at home. Kind yeah, of. that would make sense. Mm. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm mainly watching that, and, uh, and the other things I'm watching are random films that I mm. either own or have got access to on Prime or, or Netflix. Mm. I've even watched a few com- completely new series of things on. Netflix, but can't talk about current things. That would be dreadful. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can mention them in passing if you, if you find them worthwhile. Strangely enough, we did watch the first series of the the new Lost in Space, which of course connects to what we were talking about earlier. You know, mm. which was all right. <laughs> yeah, I it's... tend not to. I tend not to pick the stuff off Netflix. We just tend to watch what I'm told. Um, but <laughs> I've, I've, but I've, like a lot of people have watched. Um, Tiger King, and that's a documentary. You know, that's, very, okay. that's very bizarre and quite entertaining. Um, uh, I have, you know, it's quite good to have one in the background whilst I'm editing because you don't have to. You don't have to follow a plot exactly. But uh, mm. it's, um, it's hard to almost believe it is real, not not fictional documentary, but it is is both to be true. So. Okay. Well, what about you, Martin? Because I, I get the feeling you're, you're jamming an awful lot of watching in. Ah moment. well, well, but but for for reasons. Well, for say. reasons. Don't, don't, don't blow mm. what you're going to do. No, well, I mean, know, for the coming months. The more so. publicity, the merrier. You know, it's, yeah. it's fine. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, weirdly enough, uh, going back to conventions. I mean, I, it's not. It's no secret that our letter G is going to be GBH. Uh, and that, ah, yes, and yes. I, so I watched the first two uh, because Andy had already started watching it, <laughs> and I thought, mm. "Oh no, I've got ages." Um, so I watched the first two of that this morning. Uh, gosh, that's a brutal watch, actually. It's uh, it's not an easy watch at all. But of course, that the thing that people most seem to remember about GBH is the uh, the one set up in the back in the hotel around the convention. So with the rubber Dalek, yeah, and that kind of thing. So so that that I've not got to yet, but. Uh, uh, the other thing is, uh, I am continuing in the in the wee small hours my uh, massive, well not massive, but my rewatch of Hill Street, which is one of the reasons I bought one of these TV stick things, because of uh, we didn't have access to Channel Four uh, catch up, whatever the I never remember what the Channel Four catch up service is called, but uh, we didn't have access to it, and I found out that uh, I think because Warren mentioned it, or did you mention it? It was you, wasn't it, when I did the article on the okay. pilot of Hill Street. Mm-hmm. That it was all available oh, on all, all four, isn't it? All four, yeah, and all uh, four, yeah. So, not all four. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but because I had series one and two on disc anyway, and uh, because at some point Channel Four was showing them overnight, I managed to get most of series three taped years ago. I, I was kind of more familiar with the first three series, so I decided to jump in at the end of series three because for some reason there was an episode that didn't seem to get transmitted. I don't know why. Um, and then pile on. So I'm now up to series seven. So I've watched three and a bit seasons of of Hill Street in the wee small hours over the last few weeks. Which Hill Street Blues, I should say, uh, which has been interesting. Although I'm finding the problem with with um, binge watching is that sometimes you start to lose the individual episodes. But uh, in terms of if you wanted recommendations, of course, the thing about all four I have discovered is when you go through the list, there's an awful lot of stuff, you know. R- rubbish <laughs> but the point I mean I'm not a big fan I don't re-watch a lot of comedy anyway but in terms of drama there are um, there are two Alan Bleasdale series at least there are three um, uh, Dennis Potter series it's called Lazarus uh, Karaoke and Lipstick on Your Collar which are all on there which are you know all all recommendable and of course um, all of St Elsewhere which I'm intrigued by and I think all of ER as well so if you like your archive stuff uh, that that Channel 4 uh, catch up service it's, it's it's got quite a lot going for it and, and um, have any of us um, watched the new the new version of the faceless ones yet oh, I got to part no. 3 I got to part 3 uh, I've not gone back to it for, for various reasons I watched it in the afternoon uh, and then all this happened mm. <laughs> 
so, I, so I'm halfway through the uh, faceless ones. I, I, I'm not both. I'm not boasting, but I've got. I bought three copies of it. I bought it in all formats just to support it. I want. I felt, you know, by investing in it, that maybe there's more, more chance that more will be done. But I, I want. I bought it on for my phone to start with because I was still commuting in, uh-huh. uh, and I thought it'd be quite fun to watch it on that. But I, but I bought the hard box and I bought the just basic DVD version because when I tr- go on holiday to holiday homes I like to take Doctor Who with me but I don't want to take a nice set with me I w- so I have a travel a travelling set for holidays <laughs> now you see that's that's the interesting thing isn't it with with these if you are an old school uh, DVD set collector you know the old mm-hmm. Doctor Who uh, DVDs it's very difficult to only buy the Blu-ray I find <laughs> because because it just doesn't look right, you know. <laughs> so, do you buy the DVD instead? Do you buy both? It's very difficult. It's very difficult. But uh, I must admit that uh, because I had it on pre-order from way back when, I did actually end up getting both the DVD and the Blu-ray. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I thought, oh, it'll look. The thing was, it was because I got caught out with Power of the Daleks because I think the the color was it the color version was only on the blu-ray but not on the dvd or is it the other way around oh i forget yeah, but there was yeah. something to do with power of the daleks and then someone said oh you can watch it in full color and i thought i can't on this yeah i want so i, want, I wanted to watch the I, i'm afraid i haven't watched the black and white version yet um i i i, I always jump to the color one because i think ah you see yeah. I'm, I'm 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 far too old school for that <laughs> <laughs> i know i'll probably be in the minority but. no i don't think so actually i think i think most people do watch the colour version you know it's just I, I, I tend towards the black and white first you know I mean I was actually uh, gobsmacked was it with Macro Terror mm. because the the opening titles with the colour on just look beautiful mm. you know the, the Troughton titles they just yeah. looked absolutely gorgeous you know with that with, and it's only filters isn't it you know and, and tints and things mm. but it just it just makes all the difference you know well, I, ju- I just there were a couple of things I, ju- I just wanted to mention. Obviously, uh, at, at this time we are because I suspect it's going to happen uh, more than we'd like. But we have lost uh, on a Blackman this week. Yes, yeah. and I and I did want to give a plug to uh, Warren's rather excellent mm. um, obits that he wrote for us because it's it's okay. just a beautiful piece of writing, yeah. and, and you know, I'm, I'm one who appreciates a beautiful piece of writing when I see it, and uh, I, I, I would I would absolutely urge people to go and read it you know it's uh, because uh, you know let's face it there are there are few uh, actors actresses although actors now as well who who were kind of iconic in uh, British television uh, uh, and and the ones who are I think we should nur- you know we nurture and and appreciate them you know uh, at the same time I also wanted to just give a quick mention to uh, Dr- James Drury for, for nostalgic reasons uh, because my sister was a huge fan of The Virginian and uh, th- when, I, when I was talking last time about earliest TV memories I completely forgot that my sister oh, <laughs> somebody fell off a perch <laughs> uh, I, I completely forgot that my sister was absolutely obsessed with The Virginian when I was about sort of four or five years old so I just wanted to, to give a, a nod to so the great James Drury, who we also lost. Yes. So it, yeah, I was going to say, if you want to read the uh, the piece on Honor Blackman that Warren did, that's on roundtheArchives.blogspot.com, I believe. There we so go. So that that yeah that that arrived, I think, very very soon after the news was announced. So that was very much written from the heart, I think, and I think it shows on the piece. No, so, yes, it's, it's very yeah. it's a very good piece. I mean, Warren always does a, a very nice piece for these things. He always, mm. do, he always he, his heart is definitely there, and it, and it, and it shows. And I think you know, I, I would urge people to read it because they are yeah. very much worth reading. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, Warren can join us in one of these sessions. Cause we'll get there. We'll get there when we get. He's the... not being allowed on the sofa. <laughs> we'll get the techie stuff. We'd like to get Lisa here at some point. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lisa's away feeding the masses. Well, so, indeed, uh, indeed, indeed. Today, but thank you very much for for joining us again. Thank you. And uh, we'll have to do a third one, won't we? But I said we yeah, we, we do intend to start mixing it up with 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 who's here or expanding it 
I, th I think three works well. I, I don't know how much of a, a free for all it'll become if it, if we try six. But <laughs> well, one of the, hey, we'll try it. You never know. It might it might be the best one ever. <laughs> one of one of um, I think it's a matter of giving you know as long as you give each other the time to speak because one of yes. Top Toppy's old shows, Lots All, that was always between five and six people talking about different things. It, it's just mm -hmm. a matter of not talking over each other, which some some people aren't very good at on some shows. But as long as you know you realise that we, we should better accommodate whoever. As long as well, I hope we <laughs> haven't spoken over you, Paul. He said speaking over you. Oh, no, 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 no. no. We're, 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 we're seasoned. <laughs> we, know what to, we know what to do from hearing other people who didn't know what to do. <laughs> uh, anyway, this this whole isolation thing has got, got us doing anything vaguely creative. I think it's it's not the worst thing in the world for that. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we'll wind up there. So okay. Thank you, Martin, and Pleasure. Thank you, Paul, Thank for you. joining us. Thank and you. we'll be back in conversation fairly soon, I guess. Bye-bye! <laughs> Bye-bye. Take care.